Online family, my name is Brandon. And I'm Molly. We are part of the home team here at a church called home and we just want to say thank you for joining us. We have a great service planned for you today. We truly believe God's going to speak to your heart wherever you're watching from. We're going to step into the worship part of the service for just a moment and then we're going to jump right into the message. Thanks again for joining us and welcome, welcome home.
Wow, I am so grateful for our worship team and our production team. They always do a fantastic job. We want to say one more thing before we go into the message. We love hearing from you. We try to make it super easy to connect with us. If you text the words, Welcome Home to 94000, you can share a testimony, send in a prayer request, see our upcoming events, you name it. It's available by texting Welcome Home to 94000. If you are watching and you're in our area, we realize that before you visit in person, first you visit online. We love our online services, but trust me, it's even better in person. We've got a great message for you today. Go ahead and grab your Bible as we jump into God's Word. Why don't you give a big shout out to everybody watching online? Come on. Thank you guys for joining us. Today we're kicking off a new series titled Immeasurably More. And those two words aren't just the two words that define the series. They're the two words that's going to define this year for a church called home. Those are two words that we are believing will define us and our relationship with Christ and our walk with Jesus personally and corporately throughout the year 2023. We're believing that this is going to be a God has more in store year for all of us. Your personal family and us as a church family. Those two words, immeasurably more, come from a piece of scripture in which the Apostle Paul is writing to a group of believers and here's what he's saying. He's saying, it's time to get your faith up. It's time to believe for more. God wants to do more in you than what you could possibly think, ask, or imagine. Let me show you the piece of scripture in which those two words are found. It's Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Paul says, now to him who is able. Oh, let me pause for a moment. And let me remind you that he's still able. Amen. If you need a miracle, he's able. Amen. If there's a mountain in your life and it's an Everest and you need that mountain moved, he is still able. Pastor Dave said it so well during worship. If your life has been plagued by an addiction and you just think there's no way I can overcome, He is able. If He's ever set you free from an addiction, make some noise right now. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. I'm, I need both hands and both feet on that one right there. He's able. If you're sick in body, if you had a bad report from a physician, He is able. If there's a financial need in your life, He is able. He's able. Don't forget, if it's over your head, it's still under His feet. Amen. He's able. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. In other words, here's what Paul's saying. Whatever you're thinking, He's thinking bigger. Whatever you're hoping for, whatever you're believing for, whatever your prayer looks like right now, He is planning something bigger. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than what we could ask or imagine according to the power that is already at work within our lives. As a church, we are believing God that He is going to increase us personally and corporately immeasurably more in every area of our life as a family and as individual families. With that being said, here's why we want to start the series. I want to back up two chapters. So go to Ephesians chapter 1 if you have your Bible. Open it up or turn it on. If you don't have your app or you don't have your printed Bible, then it's going to be on the screen behind me. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Just go ahead and put your hand on your heart. Let's pray together. Say, Holy Spirit, Speak to my heart. Challenge me. Go ahead and put your hand over your eyes and say, Eyes see. 
See what the Lord wants to do. Put your hand over your ears and say, ears hear. Hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking. In Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says, when you heard the message of the truth. Aren't you so grateful for the gospel message? Jesus Christ canceled the debt that our sin incurred once and for all. Done. It is finished. When you heard the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed on Him, Christ, you were also in that moment sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, now notice the wording right here. I love the wording. I don't know what translation you're reading, but the Holman translation that I'm reading from says, He, the Holy Spirit, notice this wording, is the down payment toward your inheritance. He has become a down payment toward all that you are to inherit in the kingdom. He is a down payment. Everybody say down payment. Down payment. He's a down payment toward everything that you are inheriting as a child of God. The book of Ephesians is written by the Apostle Paul. There are 27 books that make up the New Testament. 14, so half of those books, are written by the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, he planted 20 churches in a time and in a place where church planting was not cool. He actually lost his life as a martyr for the work that he did to advance the kingdom in hostile places in a hostile time. The 14 books that he wrote are actually 14 letters that he was writing to the churches that he started. And there's a common thread throughout his letters, and we're going to see it in just a moment. There's a common thread, and that common thread throughout all of Paul's writings is an attempt to help God's people realize that whatever they had experienced up to that point, God had more. Throughout all of his letters, he is telling people, reach for more, believe for more, pray for more, obtain more. God's not done. You haven't got it all yet. There's more. He's putting people on a pursuit, a passionate pursuit to possess everything God has for them. In the book of Ephesians, he tells the believers that when they received the gospel... When they were born again, when they heard the good news that Jesus died for all sin one time and that you can have your dignity back, your self-respect back, you can have a new start, you can walk in fellowship with God. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead comes alive in you. He says, as good as all that was, it's a down payment. What he's saying is, God has... Come on, it's a play along Sunday. God has more. God has more. Let me show you this again in Scripture. Another letter to another church. The church in Corinth. That's the church in Ephesus. That's the church he started. And he's saying to the believers, Hey, look, don't stop. Keep moving. Shy in our video announcement, he talked about next steps. We encourage people to take ten steps because we get stuck in life. God said that we're made from the dust of the earth. What does dust do at your house? It settles. I'm going to tell you the greatest temptation in my life and in your life as believers is not to sin. That's not the biggest temptation. The biggest temptation is to settle. Think about the temptation of Christ. How does it start? He's fasting, right? He's praying. He's fasting 40 days and nights. And the enemy comes to tempt him. And what does he say? If you're the son of God, turn these stones to bread. The last time I read the Ten Commandments, that's, that's not in the commandments, right? I mean, that's not... He didn't say go out and carjack somebody. Go, go, go rob an ATM. You know, go hold up somebody. Go commit adultery. That, that's not what he said. He said, turn stones to bread. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. That, why is that a sin? Right? Like if I'm Jesus and my arch enemy is 
wanting me to man up if and prove that I am the Son of God, you know what I'd have done? I'd have said, bro, check this out. Boom, I'd have snapped my fingers. We'd have had rye bread, wheat bread. We'd have had sourdough bread, gluten-free bread, cheesy bread, bread sticks. Everything would have been bread. Like, bro, check that out. Don't, don't doubt me. But that wasn't what he did. The temptation was not to sin. The temptation was to settle for a life short of the power that comes by prayer and fasting. That was the temptation. Because Jesus was in the wilderness led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. So the temptation was to settle. And Paul is saying in all these letters, don't settle. Keep pushing. Keep believing. Keep praying. Keep Receiving, notice this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and verse 22. I'm going to read to you from the New Living Translation, which is one of my favorite translations. Paul writes this to this group of people. It is God who enables us, along with you, to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us. And He has identified us as His own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as, you got to underline this, this is so beautiful, as the first installment that guarantees everything else that He has promised. That's the New Living Translation. He's the first installment toward everything else. In other words, He's saying, God has what? God has... All right, God has more. Now, that's the New Living Translation. I want to show you the wording in the King James because I love the King James wording. In the King James, he says, The Holy Spirit is the earnest payment. The earnest payment toward our inheritance. Now, I want you to think about what an earnest payment is. How many of you have purchased a home at some point in your life? All right, then you know how this works. When you purchase a home, first you agree on a purchase price, right? And then you meet with that realtor and you sign a what? A contract. But that contract is not valid until you ante up and put down an earnest what? Payment. An earnest payment. An earnest payment means I got skin in the game. I mean business, okay? I'm buying this home. When I sign this contract for this amount of money, I'm not bluffing. There's no backing out of this deal. I mean business. Here's a piece of what's to come. So think about this. An earnest payment is a guarantee on the more to come, right? An earnest payment means I mean business. I'm serious. An earnest payment is a fraction of what is coming up in days and weeks from now. Usually an earnest payment, get this, is how much? 1% of the purchase price. So think about this. The Apostle Paul says, you heard the gospel, the good news, the gospel of your salvation. You received Jesus. Man, you got your dignity back, your self-respect back. You made a new start. All your sins are forgiven. He is is now preparing a place for you. You have eternal life. Right? And then He put the Holy Spirit in your heart. Crying out, Abba, Father, the same power that raised Him from the dead. And He's saying, man, that is beautiful. But you know what? All of that was a piece of what God has for you. God has, say it with me, God has more. Mm. So if you receive Christ, realize you have been, just as you purchase a home, you have been purchased with a price, the blood of Jesus. Then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit that was an earnest payment toward everything else you are to inherit. If you need peace... He's the Prince of Peace. If you're lonely, He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If you're sick, He's the Great Physician. If you've messed up and you've gone astray, 
His love never fails. If you're weary, there is a place wherein the weary can find rest. Come on, somebody. Times of refreshing come in the presence of the Lord. If you need a financial miracle, He is Jehovah Jireh, our what? Provider. God has more. Whatever you need, He has it. Come on, give God some praise right now, man. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus and for everything that He has for us. Man, look at your neighbor and say, God has more. A few years ago, I fell in love with the TV show that um, maybe you've seen it. It's called Strange Inheritance. It's an, it's an awesome show, and the show revolves around people who inherited something that shocked them. It was an over-the-top inheritance that people received. In all these stories that make up the show, the beneficiaries of the inheritance may have known that their relative or their friend had some wealth, but they didn't know the extent of the wealth. So when they found out that they were the beneficiary, when one, in all of these stories, they were shocked. But two, they were blown away by all that they had inherited. Let me read to you one story. Josh is the young man in this story. He wasn't close to his grandfather. This is a true story. He wasn't close to his grandfather. He had only met his grandfather a couple of times. His mother and his grandfather, they were not close. And the tension between the mom and the Granddad kept the family apart. When Josh was 17 years old, his grandfather passed away. To his surprise, he was named the sole heir to what remained of the grandfather's estate. He did not realize the wealth that his grandfather had accumulated over the course of his life. The estate included a private 36-acre island, and it also included an 80-acre farmland. But there was something really unexpected in the will. There was a detailed list of antique jewelry, a large amount of loose diamonds and rare gems that were hid in a large thermos and buried somewhere on one of the properties with no indication as to where on the properties or which property this treasure was buried. All the will said is, I love you, I bless you, receive, but there's more. It's a picture of what happens when you're born again. Man, we receive this inheritance in Christ. We get all this stuff back that sin robbed from us, that our choices robbed from us. And even though it's a wonderful inheritance... If we choose to dig below the surface, we can tap into greater things, more. The Bible says in Christ are hidden treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Amen. I'm going to heaven, right? Okay, I'm going to heaven. That's good news. But you know what? I'm not there yet. So if I want, I can get my shovel and my pick. And I can dig for more. That's why we call prayer seeking God. Yeah. What are we seeking? We're seeking the hidden things that God has for those He loves. Now the good news is, Josh's mom said that when she was a little girl, she remembered her dad telling her a story about his treasure island. So Josh turned that island upside down and found the treasure below the surface. I'm telling you, if, if you're in Christ, heaven's your home. If you're in Christ, you got your dignity back, your self-respect back, you got a new start. You, you, you can go to sleep at night with a clean heart, right? All of that is wonderful. You got all these promises, 5,436 promises in the Word of God. You got every one of those. But there's more. But there's more. How many of you at some point in your life, you've pressed into the things of God and you've tapped into some more? Come on. Give God some praise in this place. When we pray, we send our spirit in search for more. When we fast, we send our spirit in search for the immeasurably more treasures that God has laid up for us. But, uh, 
Greg, Greg was, he ran a teen challenge training center. So a place where people who had some type of an addiction could come and get discipleship and find freedom. So he's running this teen challenge training center and he said that uh, he's encouraging everybody to get up early and seek God. Seek God. And he said that it was his routine to typically get up at 5 a.m. and find a place to pray. He said God was just putting his spirit in search for more, for greater things. Well, he said, I didn't want to set my alarm clock because I didn't want to wake everybody else up because it was his job to sleep with all the other guys in the barracks. And he said, my bunk, we had bunk beds, and my bunk was the bottom bunk, and it was by the door. So if anybody in the middle of the night tried to sneak out, I knew if they were sneaking out. And he said, if we took in a new person in the, in the dorm, he said, I put them in a bunk abo- above me. That way, if they got up, I would wake up and I'd hear them and I'd talk them out of losing their sobriety. So he said, I'm getting up. I'm wanting to get up early. He said, I'm praying. I'm saying, God, wake me up at 5 a.m. I want to seek your face. He said, here's what happened. He said, 5 a.m. the next morning, he said, my eyes just opened up, wide awake, out of a dead sleep. I looked at my, looked at my clock and it was 5 a.m. on the dot. The night before he had prayed, he said, God, I want want more. Wake me up at 5 a.m. And God woke him up. He said, you know what I did? He said, I I thought, okay, I'm just going to lay here for another minute. And then I'll get up. And what happened? An hour and a half later, the alarm goes off. Oh, he missed his moment, right? So he said he felt so bad and so defeated. He said that that night, he said, I I laid down. I said, God, wake me up. I want to touch the more. I want to find the more. He said, wake me up at tomorrow. I'm sorry I didn't get up. Wake me up tomorrow at 5 a.m. Dead sleep. Boom. Eyes open up, wide awake. He said, I looked at the clock. Guess what time it was? 5 a.m. exactly. He said, I said, oh God, thank you. Thank you for putting my spirit in search for the more. Now I'm going to shut my eyes for a second. <laughs> Hour and a half later, he woke up, heard the alarm. Oh, he said, I felt so bad. I mean, Here God is waking me up at exactly 5 a.m. So he said that night, he said, I prayed different. I said, Lord, I don't care if you have to hit me in the head with a two-by-four. Wake me up at 5 a.m. He said, here's what happened. That day they took in a new person. And he said, this guy was, he's a big old boy. And he said, I thought about letting him sleep on the bottom bunk, but he really, he had, he had went back and forth, back and forth with this addiction so long, he said, I thought, no, I can't take my chances. So he put that big old boy on the bunk above him, and, and he said, now listen, you wake up in the middle of the night, I'm going to know it, so don't you try to sneak out and go get lit or anything like that. You just stay right there, I'm keeping my eye on you. He said, in, in the wee hours of the night, in the morning, that guy started turning in his bunk, He was so big it broke a bed slat above his head and boom, this board hit him in the head and woke him up. He said, I threw that board off and he said, I looked. First thing I saw was the clock. Guess what time it was? God answers prayer, right? God answers prayer. So, So when we say, God, make me hungry for more, God hears that prayer. And I'm going to encourage you, church, listen, as we're praying for 21 days and we're fasting, Listen, whatever you're giving up, if it means something to you, it means something to God. And you take one step toward Him and He'll take a giant step toward you. And He's going to meet you in this season. And this is going to be an immeasurably more year. Now every week for this series, I want to show you a video testimony. A God has more video testimony. And today I want to show you a four minute testimony of a good friend of ours. Part of our church here, he and his wife, Jay and Donna Monroe, Monroe. Check out this testimony, and I'll be right back. My name is Jay Monroe. My wife, Donna, and I have been coming to a church called home for about a year and a half now. We both serve on the home team, and we love it here. Back in 2009, when the economy tanked, I had a a job. I'd worked for this company for 17 years, and we finally got to the point where this company was laying off uh, a lot of employees. Um, I was one of the last ones to be laid off after 17 years. The economy was so bad that I was out of work for two years. And in that course of that two year span, I had only had uh, two invitations for interviews. As it turned out, two years after I was laid off, 
on April 3rd. It was a Sunday morning. Don and I were getting ready for church. And as I was in the bathroom getting ready to come out, she was already in the living room, God spoke to me. And he spoke to me in the most powerful way. You just can't imagine it. Uh, he, he literally put two words in my heart and in the same instant put understanding in my mind. And it was just incredibly powerful. The two words that he put in my heart were this week. And he told me that this week I have a job for you. And I just, I mean, it, it scared me to the point where I could barely speak for several hours. So that obviously was playing on my mind heavily. That was Sunday. The next morning, Monday morning, I did like I always did, which was start sending out more resumes. And uh, Monday, nothing happened. Tuesday, I got an email with a, a, an interview uh, invitation. So that interview was scheduled for Wednesday, 1030 in the morning. Now, because things were bad, I had had to sell my truck, so we were down to one vehicle. We had been paying our bills, never late, never missed any bills. We were doing okay, all things considered. So Wednesday, I went in for this interview and it went well. And at the end of the interview, the, the gentleman that I spoke to, he, he told me that uh, he wasn't making any decisions till the following week. So I thanked him headed out to the car and uh, as I was walking out to the car I had a little conversation with God and I reminded him that he made a promise that he promised me a job this week and I, I said you know here it is it's Wednesday lunchtime we're halfway through the week and I'm no closer to a job now than I was when you made the promise I said but I believe you I trust you I know that you'll make it happen. I just don't know how, but I, I know you will. So the next day, Thursday, I got another email from this guy. He's asking me to come in the next day, fall, uh, Friday morning. So I went in again Friday morning. We spoke again, and he said again that he would get in touch with me, and he left it at that. No offer for a job you know, just that he would get in touch with me. So, you know, I felt like a job was around the corner, but it wasn't according to the promise that was made. So, as I said, we were down to one vehicle. I had to pick Donna up at work that night, Friday night. So as I was sitting in the parking lot waiting for her to get off work, I got a notification on my phone that I had an email. So I checked it out. It's 20 till five Friday afternoon. And it was a formal offer for a job. I started Monday. Now, like I said, we didn't have a lot of money. We had enough money to pay the bills for April. So April 30th, we wrote the checks, paid the bills, drained the account. My first paycheck was the next day. God's timing is perfect. Oh, man. Woo! Um, come on up to the keys, man. God has more. God, he's, he's, he's in the miracle working business. So whatever you need, uh, He's able. He's able. God is able to do immeasurably more. Will you, will you close your eyes with me? Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. If today you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're away from God, I'd love to pray for you right now. And it's as easy as opening up your heart and saying, God, I need you in my life. At a church called home, we call it making a new start. That's what happens when you say yes to Jesus. So come on, if that's you, why don't you just pray with me? Go ahead and bow your head and let's pray together. Repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I'm inviting you into my life. Forgive me of 
every wrong I've ever done. I need your mercy. I need your grace. Today, I'm making a new start. In Jesus' name, thank you for saving me. Amen. Hey, you know what? I believe when the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. I believe the Bible means that. So I want to ask you to do me a favor. If, if today you prayed that prayer, would you text the words, Welcome Home to 94,000? And you can check that you gave your heart to Christ. And I'd love to send you one of my latest books. It's called Making a New Start. And it will be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Can't wait to see you next week. God bless and welcome home.